Well, good morning folks and welcome back to another video and what a lovely morning it is it's a Sunday morning the 28th of January 23 and I'm out on uh, the pocket rocket just too good an opportunity to miss with the weather being quite mild today to be fair and the sun shining so what's not to like about that so I don't know where I'm going I'm freestyling this morning we'll end up where we'll end up and uh, just uh, trying to put a few more running miles onto uh, onto the Hunter 500 and four miles it's up to 505 miles it's, uh, it's done now and about another 700 miles to finish running it in and blimey has it I don't know whether you are feeding it but this year seems to be seems to be flying end of January on Wednesday and then we're into February absolutely flying by um, yeah so I was just out on my own because I wanted to put these running miles in and I don't want to sort of uh, slow the other guys down so as soon as I get this up to running miles um, we start doing some, some proper ride outs on it but we're getting the other bikes out as well soon on Friday I've got the, uh, the Speed Twin booked in for service um, so that's going in uh, that's going in Friday morning for its first service, it's 600 mile service and uh, yeah all good um, another reason for today's video I wanted to do a uh, say congratulations really to my friend and uh, fellow YouTuber uh, Lanes Explorer Peter he's, uh, he's now well as of sort of yesterday he's hit the 750 subscriber mark and uh, his channel's brilliant relaxing rides and it's and tales of, uh, of things that Peter have done in his life wonderful highly recommend having a look at Peter's channel and uh, and have a look at his videos brilliant so well done Peter, thoroughly deserved, I'm sure you'll be up to uh, the next sort of milestone, although we're not really bothered about subscriber count, but it's, it's nice, we were chatting about it via email, and it's just nice to sort of have a bit of a target to chase, you don't have to, you know, it's not the build and end all, it's just a motivational thing I think for some people, I find it's motivational, it makes me want to improve the videos, it's nice to see people like them, so I just use it really for that. Uh, but you know, growing it to be a, you know, a uh, a YouTuber of uh, of renown. That's not the purpose of it at all. But it is just nice to uh, to see that people like what you're doing enough to want to, you know, come back and watch some more. So well done, Peter. It's all he deserved. Your videos are are brilliant. Um, they are st he has a style of his own and it's a great style and it's uh it's it's yeah you gotta watch him you gotta watch him so go and have a look um and thanks to everyone that's i did the video fitting the uh the rev counter did that thursday so what's that three days ago and the response to that has been me now it's been phenomenal really so many comments all all positive and uh, and thanking me for doing it <laughs> don't thank me it's, i like doing it and i hope you find them useful but uh, that's done really really well and uh it's picked up a fair few new subscribers and uh massive watch uh hours um thank you thank you that's all i can say really I'll try and make more of these little how-to videos because I, I like I like um, fettling with my bikes. 
and I have got two restoration projects on the go well I haven't got them on the go they're paused really they've been paused for a few years now I've got a Suzuki GT250 19 excuse me 75 and I've got a Yamaha XT250 1980 I think it is and I've done a lot of the work on them already and they're in boxes at the moment in my garage and I can't get at them because my garage is full of bikes so at some point I will start to finish those restorations and, and, and when I do I uh, where am I going when I do I should probably video some of them so if you like that sort of thing let me know So let me know and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. Try and make them interesting. It's not quite as easy as just connecting a camera up, getting your bike riding it and then editing afterwards. If, you, if you're going to try and do that one, you know, how to, if you're showing, um, demonstrating videos, it's uh, a lot more work in setting the cameras and stuff up. But yeah, I'd like to do it. So let me know your thoughts on that. I want to keep the theme of this channel about what it mainly is, is about us riding our bikes really. That's what it's meant to all be about. And we thought it's got a transport museum somewhere. I'll have to come and have a look at that at some point. Yeah, so I've got three days leave next week. Uh, Friday I'll be taking the, uh, the Triumph in. And then... Uh, well, this week, I should say, three days later this week, because by the time you're watching this, I'll probably be on, uh, on leave. Yeah, um, what else is to tell you? Yeah, so thanks everybody who's watched that video and commented and liked, uh, or left a thumbs up. Thank you, thank you very, very much. Really do appreciate it. It makes the time it takes to make them worthwhile when you get great feedback. And for oh, what I'll do now, and this is for you, Peter, and uh, Paul Holmes. This is for you after you told me the correct settings. All right, let's have a look. Tick over. Now, bear in mind it's warmed up, so it was, it was ticking over at about 1,400 when I started it up at home. But tick over now with the with the engine warmed up. That's, uh, that looks to me bang on 1,000 RPM. So let's have a look. First gear, and we're away. Changing gear at 3,000 RPM, 20 miles an hour. Again, 3,500 miles, 25 miles an hour. Third gear. So, third gear, let's carry on. We have 4,000 RPM, 35 miles an hour. Fourth gear. Fourth gear now. So, look. 3,500 Changed to 5th gear and it's dropped down 40 miles an hour, 5th gear around about just over 3,000 RPM so there's hopefully some accurate uh, values now and apologies for the error on the previous video where I was telling you they had the wrong values and thank you for Paul, Paul Holmes for uh, dropping me a, a comment saying I think you might want to have a look at them settings uh, I did. You were right. Thank you. Um, this is nice, isn't it? This is South sort of Birmingham. This is. I prefer South Birmingham to North Birmingham. To be fair, there's nothing much in North Birmingham. And we're on the Warwickshire border now. There we go. So what's coming up? I say, got the. Uh, the Speed Twin service next Friday. I've got the Scram booked in for its annual service uh, in the middle of February. Uh, at some point, oh, look at that. At some point, then, unbelievable, just dumping stuff in the countryside. Um, and then uh, I'll be moving the Scram down to, to Wales for the uh, roundabout. April time, when Easter is this year, late March, early April, I'm not sure, but that's, that'll be when the scram goes down to, uh, stand the scram goes down to, um, 
we ain't going through that. Oh, a bit of that's all right, I think, in it. I was trying to avoid having to wash the bike, to be honest. I think it's. Oh well, it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. You've got to be washed now, boy. Uh, so, yeah, where was I? Um, oh, yeah. Scrum will go down to, the, uh, to Wales at Easter. Stay there till about end of September, early October. Uh, we're going to Norfolk. A few of you already know about that. And, uh, Exploring Norfolk in July, and we've booked to do. We've now got pretty much all of the bookings done. We've booked to, to do the Wild Atlantic Way northern section um, in August, and uh, and that one. What we're going to do with that one? Is uh, we're going to rather than go Holyhead to to Dublin, heading over there, we're going to go Stranra to Belfast, and then up and over the top. As I say, we're going to do probably half of uh, the Wild Atlantic Way, uh, and then returning on the Dublin Holyhead route. So that's our plan for. Atlantic Way in August. So that's so two sort of uh, main tours, but when with having the uh, having the scram over in Wales, should hopefully do a lot of uh, explorations over in uh, West North, and may hopefully venture down into possibly South Wales. We shall see. But I've, I've sort of finding a few places that I want to go and have a look at. And I'll take you on those with me. If you'd like to come. So I think that's me got you up to date with uh, with the waffling. Oh, just a quick one as well. On the uh, settings video. On the... Oh, on the taco installation video. I uh, suggested setting the gear change uh, indicator to 3000 RPM. Well, actually, not on that. Change that. You don't want it that. It's on all the time. If you put it at 3000 RPM, um, I've reset it to 4000, which I think is about the, is the correct setting for when you want that to illuminate. So, yeah, so if you're. Uh, an update I'll change that setting otherwise it'll be on all the time so this is Whitlock's end now when I used to do station maintenance electrical station maintenance back in the 90s I don't remember Whitlock's End being quite as modern as that. I suspect that the spin station must have been rebuilt over the last 20 years or so. For those of you that don't know, during the uh, 90s, I was a uh, I worked for British Rail and then became Regional Railways and then became a, a contracting organisation when the railway was privatised I was a uh, as an electrician and uh, I would do mainly maintenance on the uh, on all of the railway uh, network infrastructure around sort of the Midlands uh, we'd go down as far as I think uh, Fenny Compton, uh, we'd get down as far as uh, Worcester, uh, over 
towards, oh, we'd all go all the way to Pacelli, but that was done from a different depot to where I worked. Uh, the, the west was done um, from uh, Donna Beach, it was managed out of Wolverhampton. Uh, but we would go over there to help out, so we'd go over and, and work on those those stations and siddling power supply points and all that stuff over there. And then we'd go up as far as uh, Cannock and Hensford and up that way. Uh, over as far as Nuneaton. So there's not many r stations that I haven't worked on or done work at, mainly fault finding and rectifying things that would happen back in the uh, back in the 90s changing lamps repairing faulty lights and systems repairing station heating systems all that good stuff got a power supply to it we'd uh, we'd be working on it oh yeah we go to Litchfield as well Litchfield Trent Valley so pretty much every bit of railway infrastructure around the Midlands so, I know where most of the stations are, and I've worked on them. And there's probably some tales I could tell you about things that we've did working on them as well. Yeah, so we'd look after signal boxes, uh, depots, uh, train care depots. Tysley, Oxley, uh, I see Tysley, Oxley, um, Soho Maintenance Depot in Smethwick. Um, yeah, we'd be working everywhere. Um, probably the best job I ever had. But at the time, wages weren't brilliant. Wages weren't that good at all, to be fair. But you could make a decent wage by working overtime uh, and being on call. So you'd make a decent living out of uh, being a maintenance electrician on BR, and I did, to be fair. And I loved it, I really enjoyed it. Some characters that I worked with at the time. And uh, favourite stations to be working on in the summer were these over here, over this neck of the woods, the South East Birmingham stations. They were the ones you wanted to be working on. There's nothing nicer than uh, going out into the countryside and uh, doing a bit of work in the sunshine. And the stations out here, they, they were, uh, what were they? Whitlock's End, Dansey, Earlswood. Didn't have very much, you, you didn't see a lot of people on them, they weren't particularly well used. They were the stations going out to Stratford on Avon. And they weren't particularly well used. Oh yeah, Stratford on Avon was another station on the on the perimeter of where we, uh, where we looked after. Um, no, they didn't, uh, didn't have a lot of passengers. So you'd have the station to yourself. <laughs> and then somebody in the city once we had to visit, well, oh, not so good. Not so good at all. Anyway, that's a little bit about my uh, career. I had a career before that, and that's for another chat another time. So uh, yeah, I'm trying to get the running miles on, get up to 1200 miles and then uh, we're good to go as you think, but I'd, the bike is uh, definitely loosening up. Ah, and I've got the MOT uh, due on the uh, CCM at the end of uh, 
end of February. Oh, I've made a few more changes and stuff to the bike, um, which I'll uh, pull over it shortly and uh, do a little walk around, show you what I've done. Additions I've added. And the Z-Green. You can see why we, uh, I liked coming down these, uh, visiting these country stations so much, can't you? <laughs> well, it could be nicer in the summer. Now these, uh, at the time, these old stations, this before LED lighting was really anything. All the big thing at the time was well, the modern lighting was sodium, and uh, these old country stations like this one would have uh, the lamp, the lighting columns, or the lamp posts, whatever you want to call them on the stations. Uh, at the time, the technology was two foot fluorescent tubes. Uh, inside these fittings would be uh, two two foot fluorescent tubes and a starter and a ballast uh, nothing special at all the sort of tubes that you would have or would have had in, the, in, the, in your house in your kitchen or your garage or your shed at the time um, and so they really were they did the job but they weren't you'd, uh, you know, you'd, you'd get flickering lights on stations because the starter had failed you'd get uh, because of the the IP ratings weren't that good at the time you'd get the the ballasts rotting inside the fittings you'd get the fittings falling apart so we would uh, it was always a always a job and the fact is that you didn't very often find out that anything was wrong with these on these on these sort of remote country stations uh, unless a passenger was using them at night and then they'd report them or a train driver would report them or a guard on the train would report them so um, yeah that's how we did, that's what we had at the time and then those fluorescent lights got replaced with sodium I pressed sodium, they saw a yellowish light some of them got changed to uh, mercury metal halide event and then but pretty much everywhere you go now is uh is LED. Uh so yeah. So we would have some fun. There was a station over in uh up near Tamworth, Polesworth, where the, the platforms are very narrow and this is on West Coast Main Line. Uh platforms are very narrow. Uh and the over in line was uh not that far away from you when you were working on these uh, light fittings and as I recall you couldn't raise and lower these you had to work on them off the step ladder and you would be uh, working on them and because of induced voltage from the overhead line nearby you'd, uh, you'd get little shocks um, from the voltage induced onto the uh, lighting column from the 25kV overhead line running nearby so, uh, the joys of working with that slightly less modern technology. Uh, so we don't in our vans we would have stocks of fluorescent tubes, uh, stocks of ballast, stocks of starters, uh, stocks of sodium lamps. You would have igniters for sodium lamps. Oh, it's got me thinking there. Going back to what uh, what we used to do, uh, uh, yeah, and then on the track on track we would uh, we were physically working on the track itself. We would be doing you know depots heating works. These are uh, heating elements attached to the rails at points to stop them freezing um, during the winter. Right, so we've been 
looking after those. As I say, there's no end to everything really. No end to a variety of stuff to do. And a very welcome type of job from uh, working shifts in a manufacturing factory. Um, uh, yeah. The trials and tribulations of working on stations in, uh, and as I say, those old days, there was nothing much to them. There were lights and the timers for the lights, little distribution board in a brick cabinet with a meter. Not really much to maintain on them. Whereas a man's station, a lot more, lot more stuff to look after. But I think I came down here, if I recall, when I was running in my show. It never does any harm to revisit, does it? So I think uh, my desire to not have to wash the bike today, uh, it's not going to come to fruition. But these are my kinds of roads. And a few over the uh, the Warwickshire countryside. You could be in the Highlands of Scotland, couldn't you? If you didn't know where we were, or deep in the uh, the Welsh countryside. Every time I ride the uh, the Hunter, I find myself I'm loving it a little bit more. It just seems to get better and better. I'm really looking forward to going to uh, Norfolk on it. Really looking forward to it. Uh, Bold Atlantic Way tour. We'll be done. We're doing on the uh, on the Triumph. But uh, yeah, for Norfolk, it's going to be this bad boy. Let's say, just get off those main roads. Whole new world waiting for you away from those main roads. So as you know, just uh, hey, thanks again. 
thanks for taking the time to watch the video. You know the drill. If you'd like to leave a like, you'd be very welcome. If you'd like to subscribe, that would be fantastic. And uh, until I see you again, look after yourselves. And I'll say to Arnold.